for something I may not have a lot of knowledge about, I Google it. How many people Google? It's a verb. Yahoo, whatever it is. Social mentions drive that. <coughs> so let's get to some examples. What did we learn? Yeah, your customers want to have a say, your critics, your fans, and your employees. All those things go into driving influence. You want to lower what we say, lower the bar. Make it easy for people to have an opinion. Build your products in a way that they're going to have a favorable opinion of it. Encourage them to share it. Make it easier for them to share it. This is an example of a recent campaign we did to launch a web-enabled printer in the U.S. It just launched this last week in Holland. And what it does is that you can print without a PC. Literally, you don't need your notebook to print. Like many of the mobile applications and stuff, we have applications on the printer itself. You can walk right up to it, use a touch screen. It's kind of a hard concept to explain. Figured if my strategy was that if I just kept talking about it, people would get bored with it. So what we did is we went out to a group of bloggers and we asked them to try it out and talk about it. We took that content and put it in ad units, so a rich media ad unit. But we made it possible that people had to opt in to watch it. We didn't want it to auto load on the page load. We think that's pretty annoying. But in that little box there on the right hand side, four million people. This is just in the US. Four million people opted in to watch those ads. So we talk about virality, we talk about word of mouth, but the fact that people chose to listen to a message from HP, I was really proud <coughs> of that fact, and the fact that we saw our sales take off as well. Because they're trustworthy. People know them. When we look at what do you trust? You trust your friends. Almost 87% of people say they trust a friend's recommendation over a review by a critic. More than 80% of those say they trust a friend's review or trust a user's review. Complete stranger, more so than a critic. These are some examples of people writing to me to tell me about their opinions of our printers and what they like about them. These are their own click-throughs, etc. I mean, I measure all the stuff that I tweet. It's very interesting to ask them for the stats on the, on the URLs that they shorten and people click through. They're much better than mine, that's for sure. Many people may know Chris Brogan. I have a good relationship with Chris Brogan. And once in a while over the weekend, we just trade ideas and stuff. And I sent him a link to an application that we have that is available both on the web, what we call a virtual simple internet application, but it's also available on our web printer. Chris doesn't print a lot. I didn't need to send him a printer. But what's great about Chris is that he knows that his customers do. They print his blog, they share it with their colleagues, they share it with their friends, they pass it out. So I sent Chris a link and just said, check it out, I'd love to know what you think. The next morning I woke up and he let me know what he thought. So having trust in your products and your services, enough to share it with somebody who has a tremendous amount of influence. Empowering your fans to be advocates. People will ask me, can I say, you know, I've, I've reviewed the product, I liked it, do you mind if I just keep talking about it because my kids love it? I'm like, absolutely, please do. And I love this one quote. You must admit that surfing Google Maps directly from a printer, printer is pretty James Bondish, if you needed Google Maps, that is. I, I, I can't buy that stuff. <laughs> I can't, I can't, you know, I used to be a copywriter, I can't, I can't write that. Um, yeah, I mean, we're talking about printing folks, so it's kind of cool that somebody would compare it to James Bond. If I tried to do that, they'd laugh. But uh, we take their, we get their permission to republish. We always ask permission because it is their content. But if we like it enough, we ask permission to put it on the HP websites. We put it on our Facebook page. Um, we've also interviewed bloggers and put it in video. I'm not sure this is gonna load or not. No, well, that's okay, we don't have a whole lot of time. But basically what we did is we, we seed the product, we interviewed people, we collected their thoughts in a video, put it out there just to see what people would have to say. Other than introducing it with the HP brand, we just let the bloggers, you know, we empowered them to, to speak on behalf of the product. And it's been very successful for us. 
And I recommend that you do it for, for your business as well, if you're confident in your products. How do you measure this? I love this quote. Everything that can be counted does not necessarily count. Everything that counts cannot necessarily be counted. But we do measure it. And there are different ways to measure social media. Um, you look at the traditional web metrics on the left and the emerging metrics on the right. These are just some of them. Metrics are going to vary by the type of activity that you do. What we measure for a consumer campaign is very different from what we do for an enterprise level campaign. What we actually do tactically in social media is very different from an advocacy point of view for a medium business versus a consumer brand. So your measurements are going to have to be different as well and morph with it. And if we're doing an awareness versus advocacy, or whether we're doing customer support, or we're trying to gain insights, be flexible enough to know that those measurements have to be aligned ahead of time, but that they morph with the types of activities that you have. <coughs> so for example, when we rolled out our campaign, we established a baseline of where we were in search results. Where did we rank when we started? And where did we finish? Again, social media powers search results. The rankings were very, very different. We also had multiple mentions for a topic that really didn't exist before, web-based printing or an HP web printer. So it was pretty exciting for us to see the context start to evolve and the influence start to build just by empowering people's opinions, lowering the bar to letting them have an opinion. Another thing to change and, uh, and embrace sentiment. Do people love you or are they upset with you? I get both on Twitter and both are extremely valuable to me. And what I really like to do is, is yes, share what's complimentary, but also turn what potentially could be a negative situation into a positive. And teammates like Arvid help me do that. But sometimes it's just, it's commiserating. I've had troubling experiences with products before and at the most critical times in business. You just don't want that to happen to your customers. It's okay to say, you know what, I'm sorry. God, that sounds incredibly frustrating. Let me get you to the expert that can help you best. Because goodness knows it likely isn't me. <laughs> How does that affect influence? Well, in your marketing programs, remember it's an and. Social media is part of the process. Use the data to inform your campaigns, to help you set up your campaigns, but also to measure what you did right and what you did wrong and learn from it all. You can use that data to set up your programs, but in something as new and nascent, I should say, as social media and the marketing mix, sometimes you just have to go with your gut. Try to have an informed opinion, but sometimes you just have to have a really good moral compass and just do what's right for the customer. That's something at HP that we definitely embrace. We always put the customer first. And that has helped guide us in social media. 